Hello there. What if we will say that your CNN model will be attracted to different brain structures depending to the MRI data pre-processing? The model attraction is basically the visualization of the most relevant image parts for the model. So there are three main methods for that. Perturbation ones, gradient-based ones, and gun-based methods. Most of them were historically developed on ADNI dataset, and the gun-based methods are definitely the most promising ones. Yet they can be quite unstable and their interpretation not that straightforward, should be translated to some model decision, and the approaches for that are just being emerging. The perturbation methods, on their turn, are straightforward, yet they are dead slow. And the most convenient way to visualize the model decision is to plot a gradient propagation for the model, for example, with the GradCam method. And our experiment here was to estimate how model interpretation will change depending to the training data pre-processing. The data set for that exercise should be homogeneous, with acceptable sample size, and known high state of their accuracy. So we choose Human Connectome Project. The data pre-processing, we want it to be as much safe as much information as possible. So we were focused on the pipeline with no pre-processing or skull stripping. The overall setup was to build accurate model for male and female classification on healthy subjects, to use data with no pre-processing or just skull stripping, to use conventional 3D CNN architecture, on cross-validation and interpret the results, the change of the results on the grad camp. We started with the raw data and unexpectedly the classification accuracy was closer to the 100%, which is higher than SOTA result. We find out that the model attention was kept on the Adam's apple, so the model was overfitted on the irrelevant feature. After we skull stripping the data, the model loses its accuracy from the most valuable feature. And the next target feature for the model is brain size. So the brain size is the physiologically meaningful feature that is not that efficient that Adam's apple was. And we were thinking of how to force the model to see inside the brain to use less obvious features for classification. So we augment the data. For the augmentation scale, we use the average intracranial volumes for males and females, and we actually increased accuracy using the augmentation. And here we can stop our experiments, yet we were urged to get model attention on inner brain structures. We decide to apply individual scale coefficient to map distributions and not just to add additive Gaussian noises to brain sizes of the groups. And the male objects were scaled to my female, vice versa, of, again on the brain sizes by the optimal transfer with earth mother distance. And this approach not only leads to interpretation we aimed on brain structure, but also it leads to accuracy boost. Concluding, depending on the training data is used, the model attention was kept outside the brain and overfitted on that example on the brain size. But the most accurate model we get was forced to learn less obvious features. We would say the whole brain and gray and white matter organization is responsible to gender differences that actually confirm latest findings. So here is the question. If we are sure that our pathology models do not overfit on gender and age-related features, anyways, we just showed how to explore these effects.